Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is Free PBX 101, version 15, episode 10, where we are going to talk about zero touch provisioning. And in this video, we're going to take a little bit of a break from actually configuring on Free PBX, and we're basically just going to explain the concept of zero touch provisioning. In the next two videos that we're doing after this one, we will actually be performing zero touch provisioning for a couple of different phone vendors. But there are a lot of moving parts to zero touch provisioning. So in this video, we're just gonna explain the concept and then that will give us the foundational knowledge that we need to proceed into the next two videos. All right, so here is what zero touch provisioning looks like. And zero touch provisioning basically means having the ability to take a phone that it is a factory default state and have it plugged in and automatically go through all of these various steps to get it to register to your PBX server without you having to actually touch the phone, meaning without you having to log into the phone's GUI and manually put in some you know, username, password, SIP server type information. And this is the way that it works. Okay, so here's our beautiful Crosstalk phone right here. This is a Crosstalk 270. I also have one sitting right behind me on the desk. And from a factory default state, a lot of various phone models, makes and models, have a default provisioning server in the firmware, meaning that when the phone first boots up, so you've got a factory default phone, it boots up, it gets its IP address, its subnet information, its gateway information, and its DNS server information. And the phone from a factory default state is programmed to say, hey, I'm alive, look at me. Hey, where should I get my configuration files? And it checks in with a redirect server. Now, a redirect server is a service that phone manufacturers provide. And here's an example of three of them. So the Crosstalk phones, also clearly IP phones, use the redirect server at https colon slash slash devices.clearlyip.com. Sangoma phones use the redirect server that can be found at portal.sangoma.com. And then Yealink phones, which is the other type of phone that we recommend here at Crosstalk, those use a redirect portal at dm.yealink.com. The Crosstalk slash clearly IP redirect server, as well as the Sangoma redirect server, you can just go there and sign up for an account and then have access to their redirect uh, server. It's totally free. The Yealink redirect server, you need to be granted access to that through a distributor or through a reseller. So uh, just a little bit tougher to get into the Yealink RPS uh, redirect server, but it's actually not a huge barrier of entry. So from a factory default state, the phone is programmed to check in with its redirect server. It says, hey, redirect server, where should I get my config files? And here's my MAC address. Now, the nice thing about having a redirect server, especially if you are going to be selling PBX systems to customers, is this gives you the ability to order a phone from a manufacturer or from a distributor, have it drop shipped directly to the customer, no matter where they are in the world. And if you know the MAC address of the phone, which most manufacturers and distributors can give you that information when you buy a phone from them, since you have that phone's MAC address, you can basically go through these steps to, so that the phone will zero touch provision when it gets to your client, right? Or when it gets to your customer site. So it's a really nice way of saying, yes, we're gonna order you these phones, and by the time that phone's get by the time that phone gets to you, just plug it in and it's gonna be good to go. Okay, so it's like magic, right? <laughs> we love things that work like magic. So from a factory default state, the phone says, Hey redirect server, where should I get my config files? Now you at this point will have already configured the redirect server with the MAC address of the phone that's connecting as well as information about the location where it needs to connect. The location where it needs to connect basically consists of an IP address. Now that can be either a WAN IP address, so for instance for a hosted server, or a fully qualified domain name. It could also be a LAN IP address, right? So if you have a phone plugged into a LAN, it could reach out to the internet to the redirect server and say, hey, where am I supposed to connect? And the redirect server can pass back a LAN IP address so that that phone connects locally across your local area network. 
So the phone asks the re redirect server, hey, where should I get my config files? The redirect server says, oh, I have your MAC address and here's the information I have for you. And it passes the you know, IP address, the FQDN, the port number, the username and password for the redirect uh, or for the server to get its configuration files, all of the information that the phone needs to then connect out to the server, right? So now you've got your PBX server. So basically the phone now has all of the information about your own PBX server based on the location information that you've already added to the redirect server. So the phone then asks your server, it reaches out through the FQDN across the WAN or across the LAN and says, hey, server, I'm here, do you have a configuration file for me? And in the server, you will have already set up a configuration file for that phone's MAC address. So since the server does already have a configuration for that phone's MAC address, it says, yes, I do. Here's the configuration and it gives it to the phone. So now your phone from a factory default state has reached out to the redirect server. The redirect server told your phone where the PBX server is. The PBX server has now given the phone its extension information and the phone now applies that configuration. So typically what happens when it applies the configuration is it will apply the configuration, reboot. When it reboots, it's gonna do a firmware check, right? Hey, do I have the latest firmware? Yes or no. And if it has the latest firmware, it goes over here and just registers straight to the PBX and you're able to start making calls. If it does not have the right firmware, uh, it goes over here, updates the firmware, reboots one more time, and then kind of goes through this whole process again and registers to the PBX. So again, the redirect server stuff is like magic. I mean, you take a phone from a factory default state, you plug it in, it hits the redirect server, redirect server says, here's your PBX server. The phone then says, hey, PBX server, where's my config? The PBX server says, here's your config. And then it goes through, applies that configuration and updates the phone's firmware if needed. This is also a really, really great troubleshooting step. If a phone at a customer site ever gets screwed up for any reason, we just, we're just we just really quick to just factory default the phone. Because if you factory default the phone, it's gonna go through this entire zero touch provisioning process again, and that solves a lot of phone problems. Okay, I hope that gives you the foundational knowledge about zero touch provisioning that you need to move into the next two videos where we're gonna be doing zero touch provisioning for crosstalk phones and then zero touch provisioning for Sangoma phones. All right, we will see you guys in the next video.